You know something is wrong when an American Affidavit of Probable Cause. Part 3. Who you are, who they are, or what they are. Who are American state citizens? All living people. All have natural and unalienable rights. All have beneficial interests in the land and its resources. All are guaranteed a limited republic style of government. All are protected by national trust indentures, international treaties, and commercial agreements. All have more civil authority on the land than the entire federal government. Have been at peace since 1865. Inhabit the land of their state. For example, Ohio State is inhabited by Ohioans. Fly the civil flag of the United States of America major. Who are United States citizens? Tories and internationalists can be living people born in federal enclaves or corporations, have only civil rights which are privileges granted by Congress, accept any kind of government including oligarchy and legislative democracy, regard the Constitution for the United States of America as an equity contract only. No civil authority on the land, have been at constant war since 1860, merely reside on the land of the American states, fly the Stars and Stripes war flag of the United States. Who are all caps United States citizens? As of 1868, another class of U.S. citizen was added, the U.S. corporate citizen debt slave. These citizens are debt slaves, have no rights, no legal standing, and are enslaved by perpetual debt. From the beginning. From the very beginning of the American story, there were three kinds of United States. One, the land jurisdiction of the several states. Two, the sea jurisdiction operated by the United States of America. Three, the business organization doing business as the United States, charged with supplying 19 governmental services the federal government is supposed to supply to the states. Land versus sea. It should not surprise us, then, that there has always been more than one kind of citizenship potentially involved. The land jurisdiction allows only one kind of citizenship, state citizenship. The sea jurisdiction, known as federal jurisdiction, allows a dual citizenship. A person may be a citizen of the United States, U.S. citizen, and of a state, and as such have different rights. From the federal viewpoint, most people have always been considered dual citizens, subject to the land while on the land, subject to the sea while on the sea. Negro citizenship. In 1868, a third kind of corporate citizenship came into play with the publication of the new corporate constitution of the United States of America, Incorporated the business entity charged with providing governmental services under contract with the states. The given reason for this new form of Negro citizenship was the need to give recently freed Negroes a form of citizenship without trying to force the several states to enact law giving them full rights as state citizens. It was also a ploy by the new federal corporation to lay claim to the labor and property assets of the freed slaves for use as collateral backing the federal corporation's debts. Hale v. Henkel tells all. A landmark case regarding citizenship in general was decided in Hale v. Henkel, 201 U.S. 43, 74, 1906. The individual, state citizen, may stand upon his constitutional rights as a citizen. He is entitled to carry on his private business in his own way. His power to contract is unlimited. He owes no duty to the state or to his neighbors to divulge his business or to open his doors to an investigation so far as it may tend to incriminate him. He owes no such duty to the state since he receives nothing there from beyond the protection of his life and property.
His rights are such as existed by the law of the land long antecedent to the organization of the state, and can only be taken from him by civil due process of law, and in accordance with the Constitution. Among his rights are a refusal to incriminate himself, and the immunity of himself and his property from arrest or seizure except under warrant of law. He owes nothing to the public so long as he does not trespass upon their rights. The court further declared, regarding U.S. citizens, which includes all corporate citizens, Upon the other hand, the corporation is a creature of the state. It is presumed to be incorporated for the benefit of the public. It receives certain special privileges and franchises, and holds them subject to the laws of the state and the limitations of its charter. Its rights to act as a corporation are only preserved to it so long as it obeys the laws of its creation. There is a reserved right in the legislature to investigate its contracts and find out whether it has exceeded its powers. It would be a strange anomaly to hold that a state, having chartered a corporation to make use of certain franchises, could not, in the exercise of its sovereignty, inquire how these franchises had been employed, and whether they had been abused, and demand the production of the corporate books and papers for that purpose. The private civilian state citizen has vastly different status than any federal United States citizen, especially corporate citizens. More judges spill the beans. The individual, unlike the corporation, cannot be taxed for the mere privilege of existing. The corporation is an artificial entity which owes its existence and charter powers to the state. But the individual's right to live and own property are natural rights for the enjoyment of which an excise cannot be imposed. Oregon Supreme Court, Redfield v. Fisher, 1930. A mere statement of this fact may not seem very significant. Corporations, after all, are not supposed to exercise the governmental powers with which the Bill of Rights was concerned. But this has been radically changed by the emergence of the public-private state. Today, private institutions do exercise governmental powers, more indeed than government itself. We have two governments in America then, one under the Constitution and a much greater one not under the Constitution. In short, the inapplicability of our Bill of Rights is one of the crucial facts of American life today. Chief Judge Fox, U.S. District Court of Michigan. Americans elect. United States citizens vote. Per the 14th Amendment to the Corporate Constitution, only federal citizens can vote in federal elections. Registration as a voter is your consent to function as a federal citizen, subject to the whims of Congress. Moreover, according to the Lieber Code, 1863, Section 40 and 41, which is still in force and effect for all federal citizens, and which constitutes the martial law that these citizens still live under, all laws are suspended, except the Lieber Code itself. The United States citizens have been kept in a constant state of war and subject to martial law for 150 years. American state citizens are owed all the protections of the Geneva Convention Protocols of 1949. Article 3 of those conventions makes it a capital crime, death penalty, to change the citizenship status of an American state citizen to that of United States citizen. But the perpetrators of this vast fraud scheme have nonetheless contrived to do this via redefinition of living people and their property assets as estates, that is, corporate entities, which fall within the international jurisdiction of the sea and which can be attacked at will. Pulling people from the land and air jurisdictions into the jurisdiction of the sea is known as press ganging, and it has been outlawed for 200 years. When the sea jurisdiction laps onto the land, it is called inland piracy. That's outlawed too. When people of the land jurisdiction are forced to donate the fruits of their labor against their will, it is known as peonage or enslavement, also outlawed. three citizenships and three different forms of United States.
Number one, there is the continental United States, composed of now 50 geographically defined states and their living inhabitants. Each such state is a sovereign nation with jurisdiction of the air, land, and sea associated with it. Those born within the borders of these states are American state citizens by birthright, having all the guarantees of the Constitution and all their natural rights intact. For example, you may be a birthright citizen of the Ohio State, which is a constitutional republic. Under the doctrine of checks and balances, these states retain control of the land jurisdiction and are supposed to protect their citizenry and resources against encroachment by the federal government. Number two, there's the federal United States composed of 50 federal states, which are inchoate, meaning that they exist in our minds and on paper, but not in physical reality, plus seven physical states more often thought of as federal territories and possessions. This makes a total of 57 federal states. They are inhabited by United States citizens, all the people born on Guam, Puerto Rico, and other insular states, plus federal civilian and military employees, African Americans, political asylum seekers, and welfare recipients. This United States is a democracy operated in the international jurisdiction of the sea. Number three. Finally, there's the corporate United States composed of 185,000 corporations and approximately 390 million corporate U.S. citizens. This behemoth is composed entirely of legal fiction entities, C-Corps, S-Corps, nonprofits, NGOs, foundations, trusts, LLCs, cooperatives, public utilities, and so on. All these entities, including states like the state of Florida, are operated in the international jurisdiction of the sea too. This United States is operated under the plenary law of the Washington DC municipality and international city state run by the Congress as an oligarchy. Purchase a hard copy of this book at amazon.com or download a free PDF copy at states.americanstatenationals.org Click on the red Education tab at the top right of the page. You will find it here.